Good afternoon. Welcome back to another Bali COVID-19 update. My name is Bruce and this is for May 16th, 2021. And so let's get started with the numbers. Okay, so what about the numbers today? Well, way down, way down. Uh, but remember, this is a this is a holiday period, um, and so less counting. We'll have to wait and see what happens next week. But let's take a look because this is good news: forty-five new cases, uh, which gives us forty-six thousand two hundred and sixteen. 43,776 recovered, 1,439 deaths, and 1,001 active cases, so we're almost below 1,000, so good news. Um, 41 locals, um, two domestic travelers, and two international, so we've got people still getting in here testing positive. Um, that's not good. And what about uh, by Regency? Buling 9, Badung 9, Bangli 6, Dempasar 6, Dianyar 5, Tabanan 3, Kung Kung 1, Karanasan 0, and Jambrana 0. So, uh, this is good news. Now, there's um, <coughs> um, some signs that the vaccine can cut down infections by up to 80%, and I'm not going to go over the whole study. There's a link down below if you want to take a look. Uh, that is good, good news. Um, so, uh, well, let's think positive. Um, we're, uh, this is March 16th, uh, and so, yeah, numbers are down for the week, uh, and uh, I'll be talking more about that. Later, so uh, we take a look here at the, uh, the weekly chart and good news. Okay, um, so let's go on and talk about vaccines. Okay, so low numbers, but uh, this is a holiday period and uh, testing is probably testing and reporting, most likely down. Uh, let's be happy about these low numbers, but um, let's be prepared for next week and see what happens uh, after the weekend. Okay, so um, next, vaccines. Okay, good news. 900,000 people already received the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, okay, and I'm one, right? And if you want to see a vaccine uh, video, uh, you can take a look up here. This is my uh, wife and I getting a vaccination uh, last week. So the vaccinations continue around the island. Uh, it's been reported that 900,000 people had been vaccinated and 300,000 of those are already finished. They've had the two shots. The vice governor said that Bali is... Uh, now close to 25% vaccinated compared to 7% nationally, so he was very happy. He attributed the high rate to the enthusiasm of the community in participating in the vaccination process. Um, well, because everybody wants to get tourism going. Uh, he continued that Bali's uh, obtained a total of 2 million doses and the central and regional governments continue to strive to con we to control the spread of COVID-19. Um, he noted that the, uh, the number of new cases up to May 10th was under 100 for the first time in a long time. And that's true. Uh, even before uh, the Ramadan, uh, end of Ramadan and Labaran, uh, numbers were, were trending down again. And so, well, as I said, we'll see what happens next week. Um, he repeated his desire to control the spread of new cases so that Bali can be reopened soon. And I'm going to talk about that uh, in just a bit. Uh, but he stressed that the public need, needs to remain disciplined in implementing health protocols, even if they receive the complete uh, dosage of the vaccine, because 
as he said, is not 100% guarantee that you will not get sick and that you can't transmit the virus. And we've already seen um, a number of cases uh, where people have been fully vaccinated and they've gotten sick. Um, I haven't heard of any, I've heard of, well, well two, two deaths. Um, I'm not sure where, where was this? I think it was on CNN this morning. Um, a few people going into the hospital, but what seems to be happening is that if you do get sick after you've been totally vaccinated, it's not as sick as you would have been had you not been vaccinated. And the chances of you passing the, um, the virus on are reduced. But uh, good, good news from, or good advice from the vice governor, um, continue to be careful, wear your mask, social distancing, wash your hands, all that. We're, we're not, for one thing, we're not even close to 70% yet. So we've got a ways to go. Okay, so. Next, uh, next vaccine story. Another, another vaccine story. Uh, the governor of Bali makes a commitment to accelerate the administration of the AstraZeneca vaccine. So on May 4th, there was 500,000 doses of AstraZeneca distributed in Bali with plans to use them all by May 20th, which is just a few days away. The chair of the Bali prov Province COVID-19 uh, handling task force Dewamade Indra said that um, this the governor is uh, fully committed, along with the Minister of Health, to getting the vaccine out and getting all of those doses uh, put into people's bodies by May 20th, uh, and that once those are used up more vaccines will arrive, uh, that we're not going to have any more shortages. Additionally, um, Dewa Indra said that uh, things were going well in Buleng here, right? Um, whereas on Friday, 58% um, um, of the vaccine had been used uh, up, and that was a couple of days ago, and vaccines are still ongoing. They'll be finished here in Kampambugas on the 19th. Uh, that's the last day to get get the vaccine. And so um, we're doing pretty good, he said. And uh, the micro restrictions or what some people are calling a, you know, partial lockdown and all that stuff is going to continue uh, restrictions uh, in restaurants and food stalls uh, limited to 50%. Operating hours are now 10 p.m. instead of 9 p.m. Uh, and... Uh, the community needs to be disciplined, continue to be disciplined, wearing masks, social distancing, hand washing, reducing travel, increasing immunity, and obeying rules, including not gathering in large crowds. And of course, we've had some people gathering in large crowds this past week, and so uh, we're going to see how that goes. But um, good news, we really are, you know, when I talk to people from other countries, uh, friends of mine from other countries, we're really doing pretty good on the vaccinations. Uh, so that's a big plus. Okay, and what about um, what about here in Buleng, Lovina? Okay, now if you've been in Bali for a little while even, um, or if you're a regular visitor, or even if you just read a lot of stuff, you probably know that Lovina is not the, the most popular tourist destination on the island. Um, it's pretty much of a niche place. Uh, it was when I came here, and I think it still is. Um, we have black sand beaches, not yellow or white. Um, there's no surfing up here. Um, there's coral, but it's not the greatest coral in the world. Uh, well, if you go to Manjangan, it's really nice. Um, and I've got coral in front of my house, but most of it's dead, unfortunately. Um, but there are some attractions up here, some tourist attractions. There's a Buddhist temple, there's a lot of things. And it's just, a, well, a lovely place. I, you know, I've been here for 32 years. I love Buleng, love Singaraja. 
but uh, this is not the most popular place for tourists. And so we have been uh, especially hard hit by the uh, lack of tourism here. And so this next article talks about this. Um, tourism actors, I don't know, that's how this come, kind of gets um, tourism, let's see, workers, people involved in the tourism industry um, uh, are selling assets. So, um, people engaged in the tourism business here are being forced to sell their assets in order to, supply, to survive. According to the chairman of the Benaria Lovina Tourism Management uh, Agency, Made Kardika, only a handful of tourists are visiting the areas up here. Uh, he was discussing in this article uh, 65 units of souvenir stalls that are now closed and I'll see if I can find a photo of when they were open uh, a couple of years ago when my niece and her husband were here. Um, and yeah, when we were down there uh, a couple of months ago and yeah, they were, they were empty. It was pretty sad. Um, and so he also noted that the guides for the, the dolphin and snorkeling tours, and the, that's one of the big attractions here, um, you love it or hate it, the dolphin tours. Um, snorkeling afterwards is always nice. Um, a lot of people, uh, a lot of locals doing that for a living, and not many people to take anymore. Uh, occasionally it happens, but you know, during the... During the heavy tourism period, pre-COVID, I used to see them collected out in front of my house. Uh, and I have a drone video, uh, I think, of some of them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, let's see if I can find it. If so, it's up here. Uh, okay, so um, he said that more than half of the, the, the people involved in the marine tour business uh, have left the business. Uh, some have been forced to sell their boats uh, and look for our jobs to survive. Uh, he said many people in the tourist industry don't have agricultural land to fall back on uh, and this is a problem that has been in the making for decades and decades and decades. So many people I know sold their agricultural land to foreigners who wanted to build houses, Back in those days, nobody used the term villa. Now everybody uses the term villa. But people sold their land, uh, and yeah, now they're out of luck. Um, so they've been forced to sell their assets and do uh, jobs, um, scrounge around, try to f find a way to make a living, um, because yeah, no tourism. So he concluded that he hoped that... Uh, through the mass vaccinations, the pandemic can be controlled and tourism can be revived in Lovina. And, uh, well, you can say that again. Uh, I hope so. Um, it's not good here. Not good anywhere, uh, but definitely not good here. And if you saw my video on my road trip to uh, Parambai, um, yeah, you know, Potted by, whoa, it was a ghost town too. Okay, so um, what next? Okay, and what would the Bali COVID-19 update be without the bad foreigner section? Uh, well, what do we got today? Yet another <laughs> tantric, or <laughs> tantric orgasm retreat in Bali triggers, triggers outrage in Indonesia. Oh man. Uh, more on foreigners trying to make a buck here. Um, this was a this was a retreat that was supposed to have taken place earlier in the year, I think maybe March, um, and was canceled. Uh, I'm not sure if it was by the same guy. Uh, this is another one of these kind of new agey retreats, um, but it's been stirring up emotion on the Island of the Gods, and uh, unfortunately for the foreigner involved. It caught the eyes of some important people in Bali. So a Canadian living in Bali is at the center of yet another online commotion about a retreat called 
tantric full body orgasm that was supposed to take place recently in Ubud for the price of US $24. Uh, the event um, social, <laughs> social media uh, marketing um, visibility brought it to the attention of the immigration authorities. Uh, well, it got the attention of both foreigners and locals in Bali and rapidly spread and immigration heard about it. Anything you put on social media now, uh, if it's, if it's going to get you in trouble, it, you're going to get in trouble. Because um, everybody is, is monitoring social media these days. So I'm not going to go into the specifics on this. Uh, it's got something to do with breath, breath work and blah, blah, blah. But it's obviously not in line with Balinese and Indonesian uh, cultural values. The Bali Balinese politician and designer uh, Nilu Jelantik called it a modern day sex business. And the MUE, the Indonesian Ulema Council, uh, that's the highest Islamic clerical body in Indonesia, called it opposing culture and religion and they condemned it. The head of the Bali Office of the Ministry of Law and Human Rights uh, called in the organizer for questioning and uh, as you can see from the screenshots uh, from the Immigration Department, they're making this case another highly publicized warning to foreigners who are misbehaving or violating the rules. Uh, culture, tradition, and values. The, the organizers called CKM, uh, that's what they're calling him in the news here, those are his initials. Um, they said he was staying here on a visitor's permit. Uh, and so he was deported for being disrespectful to local customs and because uh, he was violating his visa. Uh, CKM told authorities that the event does not in, did not involve sex but was about breathing. The head of um, the Ministry of Law and Human Rights <laughs> said that uh, CKM was not a certified yoga practitioner and he did not have a work permit. He added this yoga event is very much in contradiction with Indonesian culture, especially culture in Bali, which closely holds traditions and religious norms. And in addition to being deported, he was also blacklisted. Um, and Bali's governor, so the governor got involved in this, and there was a, um, I don't know if I can find this now, but there was an interesting little, um, confrontation between the governor and CKM here where the governor was was telling him exactly how he felt about this whole thing. Um, so the governor said, as a tourism destination, Bali welcomes world travelers, but the tourists that we receive are dignified tourists who are respectful of the laws in Indonesia and the community values in Bali. Okay, and you should know that when you're coming in. Um, I don't know who's traveling here these days, but you would think that with all the information online, uh, that you would, before you go to another another country, another culture, you would do some quick research. What are the do's and the don'ts? Uh, you can find dozens, hundreds of websites and f Facebook forums and Instagram thingies and all that all this information, well, or you can go the old-fashioned way and just you know, look at a, a travel guide uh, or, yeah, a history book. God forbid you want to actually read a real book. Okay, so this fellow has been deported and um, got a lot of, a lot of uh, press, bad press from the Indonesian um, authorities. Okay, what's next? So it's not just foreigners, as I've said before, uh, who are being disrespectful, disobeying the law. It's uh, Indonesians as well. So next story, men selling fake COVID rapid antigen test at Bali port arrested. So in another example of bad people taking advantage of a bad situation, 
Uh, authorities in Jim Brown have arrested a group of men selling fake COVID-19 rapid antigen test at the Gilly Monarch Port. The head of the Jimbrana Police Department, Pak I Katut Gede Adi Wibawa, uh, said three suspects were apprehended. They were selling the fake results to people before uh, accessing the, the Gilimano port in order to go to Java, and uh, they were selling them for 50000 apiece. Um, people are going to take advantage of everything. Um, so, and it's not just the guys selling them, it's the people buying them as well. Uh, I don't know uh, why, why people can't just go with the program and let's get open, for God's sake. Okay, next. Okay, and one final story about foreigners behaving badly. And this was um, a story in The Guardian. Um, and this covers much of what I've been discussing over the last few weeks. Uh, we've talked about all these, all these issues where people have been deported from the country. And uh, in the article, um, there is a quote, another quote from uh, Nilu uh, Jelantik. Um, and she says, yes, the foreigners bring income for us, but the, their action will risk the local who works to serve them as well. Can they have a little empathy? Well, according to uh, Robbie Septiati, Chief of Police of Badum District, uh, the foreigners have a low level of compliance towards the health protocols and regulations compared to locals. He said it's very low. Um, and of course we know locals too are violating things here, but foreigners, hey, they're going to get a lot of press. Um, as well they should, they're guests. Um, and um, one foreigner, one foreign, foreigner who's a photographer uh, got fed up, uh, just like a lot of the Indonesians are here, a lot of the Balinese, uh, got fed up with foreigners not wearing masks. And so he, um, he created a, a sign with a photo montage of tourists uh, spotted around Ubud. Uh, not wearing mask, and he displayed it at the traditional market, and uh, along with some text uh, telling people to, in both Indonesian and English, telling people to wear masks uh, and follow the rules. And you can see a couple of the photos here. Um, and a Balinese, Balinese writer, Nimade Purnamasari, said that the tourist behavior is a legacy of Dutch colonialism. Um, he said Bali was treated as a commodity then, an exotic island, uh, an escape heaven, uh, and the behavior of foreigners in Bali today is a lasting colonial legacy. They only see Balinese as tools for the tourism industry. And I've mentioned this before, um, for a lot of these people that are making Instagram, YouTube, the influencers. Indonesians are just there as back backdrop. Um, you see when people are they're out on their adventures, uh, having their lattes, jumping in the waterfalls, the Indonesians are there to serve them. Um, and this is this is one of the problems that people are having. This has become much more obvious. It's always been this way, and this is part of tourism. Uh, and it's it's been heightened uh, by the pandemic uh, because people are behaving, foreigners behaving irresponsibly, like they should be allowed to do whatever they want to, uh, even though their behavior is harming people that live here. And uh, so all of this is in line with a recent uh, Forbes article um, describing Bali as a great value for foreigners to move to because they can live here without working. So, um, more on this and uh, this, these kind of videos that are out, um, that this article is uh, part of, you see, live in Bali for $400 a month, live in Bali for $500 a month. Okay, that's a lot of money for local people for one thing. You're advertising this island to be a cheap place to live. Yeah, and you can, you know, you can get people to clean your pool for nothing. Uh, clean your house. I don't have to do housework anymore. Uh, so, 
this kind of behavior is starting to stir people up. Uh, when you get in situations like this, and, and let's be honest, this is a bad situation right now. Um, like I talked about uh, with the Lovina, businesses are going, going up for sale, boats, people are selling their boats, their houses. Um, people are desperate for work, and you've got foreigners here flaunting their wealth um, and their easy lifestyle. Yeah, it doesn't go over well with a lot of people. So, um, end, end this with uh, one quote from Nilu Jelantik, um, and she's always good at giving quotes. Uh, to the foreigners who have followers, let's hold hands together with Balinese. Have a little empathy. You may avoid posting controversial posts and have concern for the people where you stay great way to end that. Uh, okay. So, what's going to happen? Um, we're at that, that part of the, the COVID-19 um, video where we talk about what's going to happen in opening. And first, what does the vice governor have to say? He always has something to say. Um, and so, Bali Vice Governor confirms borders to reopen by July. Um, now, pay close attention to the wording used in this uh, because there's the headline, and this is the headline um, I think that came from the Bali Sun, but um, when you read the article, you'll see he's not actually confirming the reopening. Despite the enticing headline, it appears that what the, the Vice Governor said was the reopening plans remain intact. The plans remain intact. It's not confirming that we are definitely opening in July. He wants to open, but he says we're on track to open. This seems to be uh, in response to concerns about the new variants uh, that have been found in Bali, like the UK variant and the South African variant. Um, the vice governor said the central government has confirmed that the plan to reopen our border is not affected by the transmission of these new variants. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. He also explained that the health minister has stated that uh, they can still, they're still focusing on the target of reopening the COVID-19 free corridor by July. Um, and he added that the influx of international visitors would not be as large as people expect. Um, that is pretty obvious. Um, because authorities were planning on citizens of uh, India and Singapore to travel to Bali. But because of the current situation in both those countries, uh, it appears unlikely we're going to be getting visitors from India. Well, we might have a lot of visitors from India that want to come here, but they're not allowed to at this point. Um, and Singapore, yeah, Singapore has just gotten a little messy there. Um, however, he said that the, they're expecting Chinese tourists to come back uh, because in 2019 there were 1.2 million tourists from China. And so, uh, are we going to see an influx of Chinese tourists? There is still a... Um, there's still a quarantine when you go back to China. According to a friend of mine whose mom went back yesterday, um, she's Chinese, uh, and he said she's got a quarantine. Um, so, are you going to come to Bali? If, let's say, Bali opens um, and do a five-day quarantine um, and then hang around and then go back to China and have to do a 14-day quarantine? Um, hmm. I think the numbers could be a lot lower than people expect, um, even the vice governor. So, uh, but, you know, a lot of people are chomping at the bit, Europeans, Australians, but uh, there's some interesting things going on with the Australians. And so, uh, let's take a look at what's happening with Australia. I don't know, but I know uh, a number of subscribers here are Australians, so let me know uh, what about these stories, what you think about them, and what you think is really happening. 
Okay, so, um, so we're going to open up in, let's say we're going to open up in July, right? Who is going to come? Um, it's not going to be the Indians, right? It's not going to be people from Singapore. Uh, Taiwan has an issue now. I've been talking to people in Taiwan, friends of mine in Taiwan. Last couple of nights, they're upset. Um, they've got new restrictions, 180 new cases last night. And so, uh, what about the Aussies? Now, remember, uh, I mentioned this three or four uh, videos ago that the government said they weren't counting on Australia because they didn't seem like they were um, they were really interested. Um, so, will Aussies make it to Bali in 2021? Well, according to a story in ABC News, the federal budget suggests that international borders won't reopen until mid-next year. Uh, it says, under the assumptions laid out, out within the budget, a quarantine program will remain in place, limiting overseas arrivals. And that is until next year. So, that's about incoming people into Australia. So, their, their tourist business is going to be, continues to be tanked. Um, but what about outgoing uh, are people going to be allowed to go out? Well, another story. Virgin, Australia, delays flights to Bali, uh, Indonesia, and Fiji to early December. So Virgin, Australia, has delayed its planned resumption of short-haul international flights after seeing the federal budget, which I just mentioned. Um, Virgin's uh, chief, chief strategy officer, Alistair Hartley, said... While we know some Australians are itching to travel overseas, it's clear that international travel won't return to normal as quickly as first anticipated. So service to Bali has been deferred um, from sale until December 1st. But flights are already listed on the airline website starting from that date. Uh, so. We should be open here by December, so maybe maybe we'll be getting Australians in December. Um, another seven months? Six months? I don't know. Um, so according to this, this uh, story, uh, Qantas has also delayed its timeline to uh, December 2021. So if you're Australian and you've got any, any updates, any news about this? Leave a comment. Okay, thanks. Not good news for us because, uh, uh, you know, Australia and China, the two biggest, two biggest groups. And, uh, well, are the Chinese going to come? I don't know. Um, and Australia doesn't look like it. Well, there are people here already, but, um, yeah, in terms of the regular free flow, uh, just decide you want to go to Bali and then come. Doesn't look like it's happening. Too bad. Okay. Okay, so we're going to open up. Let's say we're going to open up in July. Um, what's happening specifically? Well, next story. Bali officials launch e-ticketing and uh, breathalyzer testing at Uluwatu Temple. Uh, so... The Badung Regional Government uh, uh, officials have launched an uh, e-ticketing system and COVID-19 breathalyzer, that's the gay nose, uh, one that I've talked about a number of times, at Uluwatu. Um, this is, these systems were initiated as part of the preparation stage, stages of the Badung Government uh, getting ready to open up to international tourists. The region of Badung, uh, Inyoman uh, Giri Prasta said that these are signals to domestic and international tourists that Badung is ready for reopening. He said that Uluwatu is the first tourist attraction to implement the gay nose test uh, in Badung and that others will most likely follow suit. In the meantime, he said, we will keep distributing COVID-19 vaccines to both residents and tourism workers in our tourism areas. And when you 
go, let's say you go to Uluwatu, you are going to get, uh, on arrival, a free, yes, free, gay nose test. Um, the Badung government is footing the bill. Very nice of them. Okay. Um, and if you test positive, you will be referred to Mangusada Hospital for further testing. That's a really big hospital. Um, and a cashless method has also been implemented in order to reduce contact between operators, tourism operators, and visitors um, to prevent, uh, well, to prevent contact, to prevent future fraud for tax payments. Um, so your entrance payment and payment for a ketchup dance um, will be possible using various types of electronic e-money um, from banks that mm, issue e-money products. Okay, so I don't know how that's going to work for foreigners exactly, um, but good idea. Um, okay, and free testing, cool. Um, okay, so uh, Badung Regency is uh, raring to go. Uh, okay, so that's it for this week. Um, it is hot today. Um, my uh, weather app says it's 31 degrees here, but feels like 37. It does. I'm sweating. Uh, it's it's beautiful, sunny day. Um, there is a breeze. I can see the, uh, the flowers uh, on my balcony swaying in the breeze. Um, there's some ripples out there in the ocean. The guys are up fishing. It's beautiful weather. Uh, so we got the numbers down. Are they going to stay down uh, after uh, Edel Fitri, the effects of Edel Fitri um, come in? I don't know. That's hard to tell. Um, History says no, they won't stay down. That they're gonna they're gonna do a spike, um, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, we are now six weeks away from July. Are we gonna open in July? So you see, the the vice governor says yes. Everybody is saying yes. Um, we're on track. We're on track uh, to open in July. Uh, a lot of people are banking on this now here. Uh, so, are we going to do it? Possible. Um, possible. Um, probable. I don't know. Um, I can give you a 50-50, you know, but I don't know. I would just be pulling numbers up out of the, out of the Ethernet. Um, we may open, we may not. Um, like I said, if you, uh, if you want to play it safe, I would go more with August. Um, yeah, but we'll see and uh, if you do come or if you are here already uh, follow the protocols get vaccinated if you can um, wear a mask social distancing don't be a pinhead um, remember you're protecting everybody here by following the social rules wearing a mask uh, and be kind to someone today thanks for viewing if you like this I give it a thumbs up and uh, I'll see you next time.